Hello, hello. How are you guys? <laughs> Good to see you guys. Uh, feels like it's been a little bit, a little while for book club, but not that long for the people that the two people that have that camera on. Cause uh, I kind of saw you guys at the video challenge here and there. <laughs> But we haven't seen, I haven't seen you live in a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen you in video form only. <laughs> Very cool. I really enjoyed the, the post you made too, Christina. That was uh, very interesting. I, I yeah. <laughs> yes. Sometimes like, it's fun, like, it's fun to attention. do as well. Huh? It's fun to do as well. It's fun to do, yeah. Yeah, because you know a lot. Um, and the thing is, like, you know so much that you have a lot of good content to share. Um, and at times, it's like, it's it requires grabbing the audience attention, like, right away and sustaining it. And I, sometimes when I see your video, I'm like, man, that's really good content. But, like, you, I don't know if the audience is following it. And, like, the recent one you did, I was like, man, Christina got me from start to finish. She's Killing this one. <laughs> nice but we work. can all learn from how we grab attention, even when reading books. How yeah. do the books grab our attention? Yeah, when it's in your awareness, of when you're watching someone do something and you're going, why does this one grab me more than that one? What is yeah. it about them? It's like, well, every book just kind of looks the same, right? It's like, it's a book. <laughs> but it's like, what yeah. is it? Is it the color? Is it the title? Is it the way they're writing? If it is the way they're writing, why? <laughs> is it the story? Like, is the exercise? What, what is the, yeah, if you break it down, it's interesting. Hello, yeah. Peter. And we can all learn and grow. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Um, how how are you feeling, Peter? I haven't Hello. seen you. So, are you? I do you? I, I know you're going through a bit, like without going into details. It's just, uh, how are you? Are you are you good, healthy, like feeling all right? <laughs> Very good. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. I'm almost like six weeks, six weeks after surgery, and amazing, amazing, so good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Carl. Uh, <laughs> it's good awesome. to be we here. We should catch up. DM me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Book. How's the book reading going? G guys, it's been so long. I feel like the last time I picked up this book, I was like in a different country. So um, I, I wasn't actually sure if I was like on the right chapter, but I'm like... All my highlighting went up to chapter nine. So I was like, I'm assuming we went up to that. So um, where are we up to, guys? Yeah, Carlos was in an airplane. Yeah, I was lying down. Like, I was lying down the whole thing. You know, this is actually a really funny thing. So, of course, you can spend money when, when flying to whether pay for There's always the option and decision, right? Do you fly economy or do you fly, like, business class, right? Like, not that many can, people can afford afford flying first class so this is two option really <laughs> well don't worry about the in-between ones either it's just like eh, front row seat or whatever um but yeah economy or business class right and the funny thing is like there's a big price difference firstly um and the thing is that it comes down to the space really the space and your comfort so whether you can sleep or not that's kind of what i feel like it is and so the last flight I took, um, I was flying an economy class and I was in Air Asia. I was like really cheap ticket. It's like, I don't know, like $600 or whatever uh, economy. I'm like, yep, I'm just going to buy it. It's cheap. And then when they allocate you the seats, this is, I'm talking about this because it's related to psychology of mine. Yeah. There's, there's a point to this. It's like, what is, what does the flying, flying, going on holiday and picking your option of purchase got to do with psychology money, everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, so here I am stuck at this I'm like, you know, you get like the dud seats, right? When you buy the cheap tickets, for some reason, they allocate you these crappy seats. So I'm like stuck inside window. There's like a space, but there's like a person at the aisle. And then at the other the other leg, it was like, I'm just cramped between, like in between, in the middle. And there's like two people next to me. However, 
that plane actually is not packed at all. That plane is probably only like one third full. So there's heaps of seats around. So my question to you all is that would you change seat? And if you would, would you go and ask or would you just like move yourself or what would you actually do? <laughs> Peter's like, yeah, yep, 100%. Like, I'm just curious, just curious. What is people thinking? Um, what does everyone else think? Would you move seat? That's the question. So yes for moving, moving seat or no, you won't move seat because, you know, you, you abide by the rules or whatever you got given. Just curious. Okay. How about the others? <laughs> so yes or no, answer. <laughs> just yes, no, just yes, no. Okay. Well, up to you. Uh, I just I just wanted to know. Um, and then so the thing is like when I looked around the plane, most people are like, well, like people here <laughs> probably. They're like, they're not sure and they don't know what decision they're making, except for Peter, which is like, yes, 100%. Right? And then Christina's like, thought about it. They go, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what happened exactly on the plane. So we took off and then I'm just like, there's so many seats around. I don't know why I wanted to get stuck here. So I go to the girl next to me. I'm like, excuse me. I went to the bathroom so I can see, you know, observe what seats are available, what options there are to move around. Like, is there bags here? Is there people here? Or whatever, what have you? And then I'm like, you know what? There's like a whole row here. And the people in front of me or the people behind me don't look like they're annoying people. I feel like it's a good like, place to move, right? And so out of courtesy, I thought I should ask the, um, what do they call Air hostess. I'm like, is it okay if I move seats? Because... I go out a lot and I don't want to like keep, you know, annoying the passenger next to me because I'm going to go in and out. And they're like, yeah, sure, just move. So I'm like, okay, now I have permission to move, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. So I just went in. I, I can't even grab my stuff because my stuff was window. And I was just going to that girl. I'm like, can you just grab my bag for me? Because <laughs> it was like unpleasant. And so she just grabbed it. <laughs> she, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm just going to go over there now. And have a nice, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs> and I just moved. And I like moved all the like arm things. What do I call armrest? Yeah. And I just lied down like flat. <laughs> I'm like, I don't actually care what anyone else thinks. But it's like, why would I not lie down for my own comfort here? <laughs> no one else is sitting here. Sure, I didn't pay for three seats, but no one's sitting here. So I just like slept like a baby for like the whole trip, except for like, you know, one hour of it where I was like reading and highlighting books. And then I just like, yeah. <laughs> so, so when I got there, I'm like, I'm not jet lag. I'm like totally energetic. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's kind of part of the lesson it's like about mindset of money like how do you how do you see it so i thought that was a kind of a cool thing to share um so where are we up to on the book where are you guys up to let me know in the comment or oh, in the comment in the in the chat in the chat box where are you guys up to have you read it do you have the book book <laughs> yes yes i read the book for one zero is like I don't know. I just jumped in because, you know, <laughs> you know, book club. Okay. So just come in, listening to it, listening to it. Okay, cool. Well, I want to first open it up to you guys um, to share. Let's just, what have you guys learned from the book? So you can share with each other so far, what you have learned rather than you just talking. <laughs> you just started, Rita. Uh, you've got the book, but not read it, listening to it. Does anyone have any shares? Or you want me to kind of dive into that chapter? Was it was it the um, Canva thing that drew you into here? Because I was like preparing that Canva thing for fun. Christina's got her hands up. So uh, do you guys know what I was talking about? So whilst I was preparing for the session, I thought, you know what? I should kind of just do my IG on the session and then... Um, I don't know. I got sidetracked. So I started like doing this whole thing going on. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to talk about wealth, which is kind of like chapter nine here. Because I think this is a really interesting thing. Like wealth is what you don't see, what you don't see. <laughs> right. So I thought that was a really good hook because we've been doing video challenge and we're talking about hooks. And so that I feel like 
let me know what you think, but I feel like this is a good hook. Because when I think about this, I'm like, what do you mean? So I kind of want to like read it a little bit more. Um, and so then I have a little bit of context, which is like, hey, spending money to show off is the fastest way to be average or worse broke. <laughs> so let me know if the let me know if that's kind of grabby or not, just out of interest, right? So then as I'm doing this, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna talk about this this way, right? So when we see like a Ferrari, for example, um like someone driving a Ferrari, and I'm just going to assume this thing is $300,000, probably more, uh, but let's just say it's 300000 bucks, right? What do you know? You just know they might be wealthy. That's all you know. The only fact that you have, if you knew, let's just assume the car value of this car is 300000 right? The only fact you have is that they have $300,000 less than prior to buying that car. That's it. Or they just owe an amount in between. <laughs> they could be financing the car, which means they owe money to someone else, or they borrow money from someone, which means they owe someone else, which or a combination of their own money and borrowed some money. But they definitely $300 down, $300,000 down. That's all we know. Um, so wealth is hidden. Like wealth is money, wealth is money that is not spent. Like how much do you actually have in your bank account? How much have you invested in things that you are getting a return on investment? How much money do you have? That is ownership of asset. Ownership. I feel like this is really important. Ownership. Like people think, okay, yeah, I'll buy a house. But then if it's in debt, that's not ownership. Only the equity component, that is wealth. So wealth is not the mortgage. <laughs> people can buy multiple houses and have multiple mortgages. They are just in debt. So... That's liability. Wealth is not debt. Wealth is not handbags and cars. Right? So, which is, I, I wrote this and maybe it's obvious and maybe it's not. I, I don't think it is because when I look around, that's what people think it is, right? People show off the fancy car, even when they don't have the money. Let's buy the Mercedes. Let's buy the Tesla. Let's buy the, because I don't want to drive a bomb, <laughs> right? But they don't really have the money to drive that car. And a lot of people, that's why there is so many car on finance. If that wasn't the case, there would be no option to buy car on finance. <laughs> and it costs a lot to buy car on finance too. Like the interest rate is a lot. And the moment you drive a car out, that depreciates. So you're only money going down in like many, many ways. Um, and when we think about what wealth really is, the whole thing, not just money itself, it's like, what are we ultimately trying to do here? <laughs> like broader picture. Aren't we all here for happiness? Aren't we all here to enjoy life? So we want money so we can enjoy life. We want money so we can like be happy, right? Do things, do activities. When we're driving, say, a car, that's like, say, a Toyota, <laughs> You are going to have as much of an epic adventure in that car than like a much more expensive car that's five times more. Like that doesn't change anything. The car still gets you wherever you want to go. <laughs> Whatever you're enjoying uh, when up on your destination, that's the thing, right? That's the fun part. Like that's the adventure. That's the hiking up the mountain that's uh the enjoying the food with your loved one like wh whatever that thing is so um i just want us to kind of like you know take a step back and really think about this um in the way that makes sense for our life um so i feel like um we get trapped in this thing and by the way i haven't forgotten about christina we'll come to come to you uh, that it's monkey see monkey do so uh, my thoughts on this are, <laughs> and I know I've simplified it a lot, so I'm kind of like opening up for, for people to take a jab at me when I post this or, or write it in the comment, but um, my very simplified version is like, hey, babies learn by imitating the mom. Sure, somebody's got to be worried about that dad. Yeah, parents, I could have wrote that, but you know, they are closest to their mom first. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not bullshit ourselves, right? Kids are breastfeeding with their mom. Like they are closest to their mom first for sure. 
right? So babies learn by imitating their mom. Kids learn by imitating other kids. Teens learn by copying their idols, right? Who, who are they looking up to? Um, adults learn by going with trend. <laughs> and people are good at imitating others. They're good at imitating others. So they copy what looks like wealth. Let's get the fancy this, fancy that, fancy that. What is on the outside? The, all the external stuff rather than what is wealth. <laughs> um, I just thought I'd put a comical monkey there because I thought he looked entertaining. <laughs> um, and so after this, I'm like, okay, did you find this valuable? Follow me for more awesome tips. Here to help you break free. Here's a good book recommendation. <laughs> so I'm like, I just took a picture. So have a great day. Um, maybe I should write something more. So that was kind of just like what I thought would be interesting um, to kick off this uh, book club session whilst I was like preparing. Um, so now opening up to hear your thoughts. Uh, let's start with Christina. Hey, let's did you start like with that? a simple thing. <laughs> Let the me know front the page. If you've yeah. seen the front page of the book, it's a mind with a lot of money inside. And like, you know, when you it's go like to a, a brain. museum. It's a brain or a maze. Yes. Yeah, or, or a maze, yeah. But if you go to a museum, it's like looking at a picture of art. It's a good way to discuss what is actually wealth, what is in our mind. Because mm. when you go in the book, I've only read the first two chapters, but it's a lot about mindset, how you think about wealth. Is it really money or is it things or is it communities? So I like, I really like the front picture. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, it's a well thought out picture. Yeah, for sure. And it, it, yeah, so it, it's got many, yeah, <laughs> it's got many things like within it. Yeah. Who else? Oh, let's have a look at the chat as well. Let me catch up on that. Uh, what did you guys write? Uh, yeah, it could be a friend's car. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, could be a friend's car, Christina. Yeah, they could be driving someone else's car and users assuming they are, they are wealthy. They could be driving their dad's car. They could be driving their friend's car. They could be a rented out car for the day. Like, you don't know. Um, Ferrari is that they, they're not wise investors. Yeah, exactly. That could be the case. Like, can they actually afford it? Yeah, it's a wise investor. Um, hey, if it was like, sure, like people can do all sorts of uh, logical argument or, right? Like there are some cars that could... Um, worth more <laughs> let's say if you own like a james bond car like it it can appreciate but it's like that's rare right like or if you held like some sort of car and then over time like it becomes something more but that's kind of more rare than um yeah being wise investors like most a lot of people buy it but they may or may not can afford that uh what else do we have here your chris your surrounding and community affects you totally yes so many people, it's like maybe they're the friends that they're hanging with uh, or of a certain status. And when they want to be hanging in that circle, they could be uh, buying things um, or under the pressure to be in that social group so that they spend more to fit in. That's one of the things. Um, and the other thing is like, hey, those people could lift you up though. Like you could be doing a job that's like maybe not so great, but maybe your friends are earning three times more. And that in itself could, in a positive manner, makes you like, damn, I need to strive for more, right? That is, so it could be a good thing as well. Um, but yeah, definitely community totally affects you. So whoever you hang with, you're definitely getting influenced by them, good or bad. But you're the for certain is that you get influenced by them. Um, is that a carousel post? It will be when I post it. Yeah, I'm going to do one of those swipe, swipe things. That's why at the bottom I had like the swipe. Um, yeah, and what else did you guys write? Uh, general mentality is to be in debt but get the shiny thing. Yeah, that happens all the time. People, people is okay to be in debt and they get the shiny thing and that's, that's actually the stress, right? The stress of I have to grind so hard to just cover all of these things to keep up with the Joneses or keep up with this image that I like now have, um, whether that's like latest phones all the time and, or whatever that is. Um, you guys wrote, that's why rich people get richer and poor people get poor. Yeah, to a certain extent. Um, I feel like we have ways to break, break out of that. Um, but that's, 
about getting ourselves um, smarter, right? I'm working smarter. Um, and I think this book has a, a lot of good concepts to implement in our life. Um, sometimes the rich people look at the value of what they are getting or people look at the cost of what they are buying. Do you want to elaborate, Christina? With an example, maybe? Uh, an example. I have heard this in so many of the big thought leaders when they are wide, when they're talking about a high ticket offer. They always start at talking about uh, Dan Kennedy's book about affluent buyers, what they think about. And he always talks about if you want to buy a thing, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on what your investment is in time and money? Or you're looking at the outcome, the expected transformation. What do you get out of it? Yeah. So sometimes if you know you want like a transformation, I want to become wiser in something. Mm. That could be me two weeks ago about doing videos. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Or I think again. Okay, I can be better at a certain thing. So look at the outcome and not just the investment up front. That is yes, that's a yeah, that's a perfect example just yeah, just now because we just finished the video challenge. Yeah. So that's yeah, that demonstrated really well. So yeah, somebody that's maybe never paid for um know, acquiring the skills, they might go, $97, why do I want to pay $97? For seven days with this calms person, right? And so that was just focus on the hundred bucks, right? Hundred bucks, man. I could have just YouTube or whatever, I'll do whatever. But the fact is that when you came in, and and you know the other people that are here, that's in. So it's like I feel like everyone got way more than ninety seven dollars worth, right? Uh, the amount of growth day by day was amazing. The amount of like confidence building on video presence, on the video editing skills. Like in one week, if you could grow that much in yourself and in actual skill set, it's like, holy shit. Like most people would not grow that much maybe in a, like a long time. It could be months and months, right? Um, so that's the part, right? What's what's the worth? Um, and some of that confidence stuff is like people could be doing that for years. Like, you know, some, some people are like, I've never comes, I've never posted a video. Like, there's not something I would ever do. And it's just because you keep poking me and I'm seeing the others do it and their videos inspiring each other that they're like, okay, I'm going to do it. That breakthrough is worth a lot. So, yeah, great example. Um, and you're right, like whenever I invest in any personal development thing, I don't actually think there has been any that I feel like I didn't get more than I invested. This, funny enough, even goes for programs that I thought is not worth it. You know why? Because I still learn a fucking valuable lesson. <laughs> because <laughs> if I pay like 5000 to a thing and I was like, that wasn't worth 5,000 bucks, but I paid for it. In my mind, I have to make it worth it anyway. So my mind does this weird thing where I go, you know what? Knowing that person can charge 5,000, I'm going to make that thing so much better. I feel in all the gap that I don't didn't get. I'm going to learn that skill and I'm going to teach this to people at a cheaper cost and give them even more, right? So now I feel really good when I teach and I offer something because it's like, I know if they bought this from someone else, they would have paid a lot more for a lot less. So I would always feel congruently good about that. Um, yeah, so that's like, that's the learning I get every time I buy something. And then that comes back in many forms as part of it. So yeah, I, don't, I, I really genuinely feel like if we are wanting to build our wealth, the best investment is always ourselves because there's nothing like the whole world can shut down. Everything can go wrong, Like everything can go wrong. And you will still have you. You will still have you. Like if I lost all my money right now, I still have all my skills. 
like I would just be able to build something back from scratch. Like even if Facebook closed down, even if IG closed down, like all my channels went to nothing. It's like, that's fine, <laughs> right? You just build it again <laughs> because now you have the skill set to redo those things. Um, what else do we have? You read Millionaire Next Door. They found they live in poorer suburbs below their means. True Millionaire live below their means. I live below my means too. I think I, I think that's part of it because below your means is kind of like an interesting concept. So, because a lot of people will be like, hey, if you're a millionaire, why do you like, I don't know, not wear whatever fancy clothes or whatever thing? It's like, why? <laughs> like, I don't have time. Well, it's not my preference to go out to the shops to go shopping all the time and buy a bunch of stuff and they keep changing my wardrobe. Like, that's a lot of time consumed. I don't feel like it adds to my life evolution, which is what I'm focusing on. So I don't feel like that thing grows me in any way. Sure, I look better. <laughs> I look better if I wore nicer clothes. I get that part. <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm growing as a person. And my focus this lifetime is like I want to level up in consciousness. And I don't think that stuff will make me level up. Of course, we are in different journeys in this lifetime and we focus on different things. So we will gravitate towards whatever it is. It's just, and I, and I think we have different life like that we live through. So um, yeah, so this lifetime <laughs> um, is just what I'm focused on. I don't know if other lifetime there's a trendier or, you know, more fashionable comps. There might be, there might not be. Maybe I've always been like this. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Um, I buy if there is a no, like trust factor. Same goes for our audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all buy who we like and trust. Um, that's really important too. And I think it's important we have a skeptical mind because there's just a lot of weird stuff out there these days. So uh, like and trust factor, super important. Uh, okay, who else have shares? Who else have shares? Feel free to call out. There's not that many of us. Why are you so quiet? <laughs> it's like studious, you know, students. Like you're not in Hong Kong, you know, where you like sit in rows and then you're like really quiet. It's like you're allowed to go. Like... <laughs> Christina. <laughs> Uh, Go ahead. One of the topics here goes, uh, just have the PDF uh, up. He talks about not just wealth and happiness, but he uses the word greed. And sometimes yes, people don't that. like to talk about greed. That's the nasty part of our inner self. Am yeah, I it has greedy? like this uh, negative connotation to it, that word. Yeah. So that that word struck me like, okay, what am I going to read about greed in this? What was it? What was it? Can you remind us? Hi, Joel. Oh. What was the, the greed thing mind. in a good way or a bad way? I don't remember now. No, me neither. <laughs> I think the I think the greed part, I might be wrong, but I think the greed part was that basically all humans are greedy. It's just that we don't want to kind of like outwardly admit that um but we will gravitate towards that uh because ultimately we want more <laughs> doesn't everyone want more stuff um so there is a greed part to wanting more things um and maybe part of it is just recognizing that it's okay <laughs> to want more stuff but being smart i think it, it's in a later chapter comes because yeah. in chapter 11 he talks about if things are reasonable or is it rational reasonable yeah versus over rational it's chapter 11 you're not a I spreadsheet you're a person <laughs> he starts off this thing with like you're not a spreadsheet you're a person a screwed up emotional person <laughs> where to go morgan you're making friends here <laughs> this is why it's good to read books because I would never say that but if I'm reading it from a book <laughs> that's not me saying it <laughs> that's his words oh. 
You guys, uh, it took me a while to figure this out, but once it clicked, I realized it's one of the most important parts of finance. When it comes to something that often goes overlooked, do not aim to be a coldly rational when making financial decisions. Aim to be just pretty reasonable. <laughs> reasonable is more realistic and you have a better chance of sticking with it for the long run when it's what matters most when managing money. Now, I haven't fully read this yet, so I don't want to assume what this is about. So I want these are no longer Morgan's words, okay? So when I read this, um, when you say reasonable is more realistic and you have a better chance of sticking with it in the long term, whenever I read people's words, I always go inwards into my mind and go, does that make sense? Like it's always a thing. And then I'll try and find an example of that making sense or not. So immediately my mind will go towards, okay, if I put my money, for example, into stock trading, I know that this is a proven strategy of building wealth. So my rational mind could be like, okay, say if I have 5,000 bucks, let's put it on the stock market. And then, you know, I do my analysis, put some spreadsheets together and then make sure it grows and, you know, try and be like, get a return on 10%, right? That would be kind of like the rational thinking. However, when I read the next line, which is about, but you just want to be pretty reasonable rather than um, rational, this is the part, right? I hate looking at the stock market. So the reasonable part is like, I would never do it. <laughs> I just would never do it. I mean, I would if I had to, but it's like, I would rather go get another coaching client, which is way more fun for me. Like I would run another workshop um, and get another coaching clients because they got to know Calm better than try and sit there and look at the stock market and analyze all the things. Even though I'm an accountant and even though I got really high score in investment, particularly financial instrument, financial accounting, all of, I actually got high distinction awards in those things. So even with the technical skills and the ability of able to do it, I still don't like it. I just don't like it. It's, it's not that I can't, I don't enjoy it. So that's where I see the reasonable part, um, which is what actually picks your interest and you would spend time on it. This is the, and this goes for even beyond money, right? Like if we are, say, for example, we are uh, not of the weight that we want, right? And we go, okay, we want to like lose weight. We were just like what a lot of girls want to do. And then they would always, you know, try and go on some weird fad diet. Like every time I go out with my friends, they'll have like some random weird thing, right? I'm drinking lemon water. Or I'm like, I don't know, doing something, right? There's always something. And, but the thing is that thing doesn't necessarily stick. So, but the reasonable, the, the, that rational thinking would always be like the market will always throw the next trendy thing at you. This is the next superfood. This is the next health diet. This is the next super pill. Like, you know, there's always something like a new vehicle. And so these shiny things or new mechanism that people put out will always change. And then people will always adopt to it because they will think, oh, yeah, the reason I'm overweight is because I haven't found this thing. <laughs> I haven't tried this like detox diet. I haven't bought the skinny tea. I haven't got this new extra special pill that's in development. Like there's always those things. That's the rational mind thinking. But the reasonable mind is that, the reasonable mind is that all you really need to do is either more exercise or either eat a reasonable portion of food. That's actually all it comes down to, right? So we want to go to ourself and go, if that is the goal, then I just got to make sure I only have like three meals a day, for example. And if I tend to overeat, then it'll be like, <laughs> I only get to fit it into like 
this bowl. Wh whatever I can fit into this bowl, <laughs> that's it. It's like um, when I was in like high school, I when I fit whenever I finished school, I used to be starving, starving, right? And then there was this Chinese takeaway place. I ate there all the time, and what they had was like you could pay for at that time. I think it was like I don't know like seven bucks or whatever it was for this tiny little plate, right? So let's just assume it's a bowl. <laughs> so assume you like seven bucks, you can fill as much as you want on this, right? That's it. You don't get to refill it. It's not all you can eat, right? So all it, I can possibly eat is like whatever I can fit in here. So I would like lay down the prawn crackers at the bottom and then try and like do the thing and then put the noodles as high as like a little mountain without all, any of it falling down. But like that is actually the maximum amount I'm allowed, I can put on this plate before it like, you know, <laughs> falls, falls apart and I make a fool out of myself and probably get in trouble, right? Like I don't want my honey chicken falling on the floor and then someone thinks I'm like wasting food. Like that's not a good, that's very embarrassing. I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I see that kind of like the same, right? So it's like you just got to limit yourself to a reasonable thing on like how can you make yourself do this? Um, that still feels fun. That is okay that you would do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that goes for all life and like money. So money, it's like if I want to grow my money, but I know I, I don't have time for the stock market and I know I don't have enough deposit for house, then my thing, my mechanism could be like, hey, every time I get pay, um, I'm going to just put 50 bucks every week away into this account. And I don't touch it at all. And every week I just throw it in, it's thrown in and just let it grow. Like that could be just be the thing because that is the easy, reasonable thing to do. And if you do that, your money is going to grow because you didn't waste that $50 on some random stuff. <laughs> That's kind of what I get from it. What do you guys think? Yeah, Peter, go. I've got, a, um, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. And I, everyone's got just those, everyone's just exposed to different ideas of where to put their money or what to do with their money. Yeah. I have a I have a um, I have a friend who invests in buying number plates for cars. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's like a hobby though. Totally. But it's an investment. So yeah. they, you know, that's that's their choice. Yeah. Yeah. And they can make a lot of money from that. Because yeah. they could uh, watch out for that. Um and then they go, oh, they get get the nice numbers and the nice combination. And because they're like the first one to get it when people haven't thought about it, like they can make a lot of money out of that. Exactly. I love that Peter shared this because I keep telling people, because people go, oh, how did you make the money? It's like, it's not the vehicle. That's not the path. <laughs> like, it's not that. Like, that's not, the, I'm like, I can answer you, but that's not the answer. That is not the answer. Like you say, like, it could be, it could be number play, right? It, it could be, my my friend, she has, she is wealthier than me, I presume. Um, she, uh, she definitely has more property than me. Um, she does very good in interviews and she keeps changing jobs. Uh, <laughs> she probably changes jobs like every half a year and so her resume looks very chuffy and somehow she can still like land a job and land it well too. Like, you know, oh, I can't just land, land a 180K job. Yeah, nice. I, I'm not, how are you doing that when you like keep changing jobs like that? Yeah, you know, but it's like when you have a skill set, you know you're good. You just know. Um, so you can do it. It's not, it's reasonable for her. It doesn't feel reasonable to me, but it's reasonable for her. Um, and you know what she trades? Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. <laughs> so there's, uh, there's part of her that looks for Tesla. She doesn't drive. That's the thing. She doesn't even drive, but it's like, Hey, if I can, cause there's a period and maybe still now where, you know how COVID kind of came around and it was really hard to get cars. And then, so if you could get cars, they, they end up worth, worth a lot. Right. So even now, like if you order a car, a lot of cars are like still on backlog. So you could have to wait like a year or even more than that to get, to get some, some cool cars that just not available. So naturally because of the demand, they go up. Yeah. So my friend will be like, oh, I should buy this car or I should buy this Rolex or I should buy, like, or, and she trades Pokemon cards. And I was like, what? <laughs> and yeah, so that's what she does with her time. Like, even though she makes a lot of money, even though she invests in property and other things and stock and 
I don't know, cannabis. <laughs> all, I don't know, all sorts of random stuff, right? Whatever is kind of like going up in trend, she's kind of like into that if she can, you know, do do the get the margin up from from the trade. Yeah. It could it could literally be anything. Yeah, Peter. Do you think the risk, like when you start to become skillful at something, like whether it's stocks or, you know, um, number plates or Pokemon cards, when you become more skilled at it, the risk level becomes lower. Totally. So it's, like, it's like, you, yeah, you're becoming an expert on that particular yeah. way of making money. And you, you know what I love about this when you say this? Morgan was talking about... Um, I can't remember was it in this book or actually outside of this book. Maybe in both. He was talking about the concept of gambling. So, for example, if you guys, let's talk about some riskier investment because stock and houses are relatively safe and we and we, we kind of like now mention like Pokemon cards or like number plates, like do, do the risk go lower when you like, you know, you're better at it. But let's go to something more extreme, right? Let's say if we're talking about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, that kind of stuff, right? Is that a gamble to you guys? Just interested. So Peter's like, yep, yep, nod. Uh, yeah. What does other people think? So crypto, NFT, <laughs> are they a gamble to you? Is that high risk? Don't know enough about it. Gamble, no. Suli say so. Suli's probably saying no because she actually invests more time into this area. So for her, it's probably lower risk because she probably sees a very foreseeable future uh, for this kind of thing. I'm assuming that's where that no comes from. Feel free to elaborate. Pauline says goes down or volatile. Interestingly, volatile agree, but the initial thing Pauline says is goes down. But if it's volatile, it means it also goes up. But like that initial thing she wrote is goes down. So that means her view of this uh, without even, you know, asking what questions, like I can tell she would have a, more of a negative skewed towards a negative view on this um, than, you know, the potential gain. Now, why am I saying, talking about this? What does cryptocurrency have to do with financial mindset? Everything. <laughs> so this thing is like, if the question is asked of is investing in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency a gamble, most of you guys will probably say yes, I'm guessing. But without guessing, maybe we should just raise our hand. Probably other than Zuli, I'm, I'm guessing the majority of people is going to go, yep. <laughs> is, that, is, that a, is that a yes or just, just wondering? Just so I'm not mind reading. Um, Okay, so risk is relative. So, so Christina is saying risk is relative compare investment like gold, houses. Yeah, what is gamble? So yeah, exactly. So what is gamble anyway? If we are going cryptocurrency is a gamble, then yes, the question is what is gamble? Do you guys consider yourself gamblers? Shaking your head, most people shaking your head. People that I can't see are shaking or nodding, please put it into chat so we can interact with you. Um, so most of you guys don't think you're a gambler. And here's Morgan's take on this. We are all gamblers. You are all gamblers. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking no because my head is screaming as well because I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't gamble. I'm very low risk. I'm very low. I'm very risk adverse. I only put in things the way I've calculated the risk. So I don't feel like a gambler. I don't go into the casino. Well, I do, but I don't really gamble. I don't go on the table. I just eat food if I go there <laughs> or entertainment or something. I don't buy the lottery. So I'm like, I'm not a gambler. That's kind of my view, right? That's my stance on it. And he is where I kind of willing to change my mind on it because I feel like Morgan has put together a good argument on this. And I'm always open-minded. So if someone has a good view on it, I, I'm always willing to change my mind. So he was saying that we are all gamblers because every single day you're gambling. You don't know what one minute from the next. When you, who, is, who lives in an apartment? 
just hands up, lives in an apartment. You guys all live in houses. Just wondering. Who lives in an apartment? Like, who lives in an apartment where there's a lift? Well, my, let me ask a different question because, like, everyone's just kind of stern. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Is everyone living in... Well, do we not have houses? <laughs> We're living on the street? Like, what, what is going on? All right. My, uh, let me ask this question. In the last <laughs> week, have you taken an elevator instead of the stairs? Okay, Jewel is still shaking her head and... Okay. Oh, I sure did. So I did, yes. Oh, you did. Okay, so... Most people seem to have taken the elevator instead of the instead of the staircase, right? When we are doing that, we're gambling. The gambling. Because in your mind, what you did was you took a gamble. You were like, I feel like in the country that I live in, taking this elevator, I assume you did this is not conscious, right? This is not conscious. Your subconscious mind actually did this calculation for you. You went like this. It went something like this behind. It was like, I'm going to take the lift because I have seen other elevators. I've taken other elevators. They seem real, pretty safe. Have, yeah, nothing much have happened. And I presume in this building, there's a code where they do regular maintenance. So I trust that they do regular maintenance. I also trust that there is like the government that looks out to these building codes so that there is like enforced rules that there are people ensuring their safety for our citizen, for like the people that are living here. Like there is a standard in place. So there is this inherent trust in this thing box, this random box, <laughs> That gets that pulls you up to God knows whatever level, even though your life could be at risk because it could snap and you're just like boom. <laughs> Whereas versus the staircase, which is built like freaking in concrete and shit, <laughs> like the chances of that crumbling down, even if you fell over on the stairs yeah the chance of you getting hurt is like very low compared to the falling to death <laughs> and being crushed in an elevator potentially with other humans right so you took the box instead of taking very very 100 percent safe but not 100 percent, maybe 95 percent safe staircase because you why because for you to exert that amount of energy going up the staircase, and, and we all have this energy bar, right? So from the moment we wake up, we recharge ourselves to it. And these are not very much Morgan words. I'm like totally re-saying it in my own words now, right? So you recharge yourself like with this energy bar and you feel like taking the stairs up to t level 26 is going to deplete a lot of energy of yours. So you're like, no, nah, I'm going to take the risk of this elevator so I can conserve my energy. That's survival, really. <laughs> so we are gamblers every day. <laughs> we are gamblers every day. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so... What does, the, what does that have to do with anything is that you just accept that you are gambling and let's hear what Christina have to say because she's had her hands up for a long time. Christina! When you mentioned <laughs> the elevator. Like I'm on 50 floor. <laughs> she takes an even <laughs> bigger gamble. See, 50 floor, you think about that. Falling 50 floors, nah, you're not surviving that. <laughs> I love to take the stairs. I love the energy, you know, it's exercise for free. But I've been at a big hospital with a lot of stairs. And there I was pregnant seven months and the elevator stopped. <laughs> and okay. it was summer, it was hot. And, you know, a hospital, they should fix it up. It They couldn't move it straight. So I had they had to pull me out between two uh, floors pregnant. That was not an easy. So I remember that time. So, yes. Taking an elevator can be risky, even in hospitals. Yeah, see, with that experience, she may she may reconsider her lifts, or maybe she would even stay at home more than going out if she was pregnant again. 
<laughs> because the chance is like, you don't want to increase you. <laughs> or, or maybe that's why people like a living when they have a family, they live at houses with the white picket fence because they can just walk to home in safety <laughs> and not take these risks on like getting stuck between elevator floors and really hot sweatiness. What about me and the kid? This is not safe. <laughs> I want the white picket fence, not the apartment. <laughs> that's, like, that's, a cool, that's a cool story. Anyone else have shares about anything we just talked about? <laughs> Does that make you think about things a little bit more? Yeah. <laughs> Leticia's got like these upside down smiley face. What does it mean? Okay, we've got some hands here. Uh, we'll take we'll take uh, Elaine's hand because I think her hands was up before. Then we'll go to Joel. Elaine. Oh, hi. Hi. Well, actually, recently, right? Why my... are you hiding? I can't see you. Recently, right? My... Uh... <laughs> Neighbor actually got stuck in the lift for I like, guess oh, no. twenty plus minutes, and because yeah. got stuck in the, in the lift, right? Um, then one of the guy actually decided to move out and went to not stay in the high rise building anymore. So he just went to like stay in the land property right now. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's yeah. I think if I had a really terrible experience i probably end up living back in a house too <laughs> right now i'm enjoying my apartment living because it comes down to the reasonableness right the reasonableness not the rational the reasonableness so i used to live in a house prior to this uh and my reason of living in the house was like because it's very safe uh and i had a police station kind of just around the corner so i felt particularly safe i have this thing about safety <laughs> And so Peter's like, oh, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> and so I then moved to an apartment now for my safety as well. Why? Because mm, I think ever since I put myself online, I feel different. So if I'm a normal person like before when nobody knows me, I just did a job, I actually feel very safe at home. Ever since I put myself in public, I actually feel less safe about being in a home because if people find out where I live, I feel like they could just find me. Whereas being in an apartment, they need a swipe key to get to me. So I actually feel safer being on a higher floor where, well, only the people in this building could potentially come up to the to in this building firstly and then only the people can get on the floor so that's that uh, that's one aspect and the other aspect is like I guess I'm just lazy <laughs> in that I want more of my time going into increasing my consciousness activities rather than on the weekend of having to do the garden <laughs> like I'm not like a real garden person and so being in a house, I had a garden. So I had to like mow the lawn. Then I had to like get the gutters and then I had to go and chop the trees. And even though those are good things for my physical well-being, like touching the soil, being with nature, those things are good for you physically. I'm like, I'm not enjoying that. Climbing up the ladder, chopping the tree, scooping up the soil and then insects and getting bitten by mosquitoes. And like, that's not enjoyable for me. So I don't really want to spend my weekend doing that. And then also having to roll the bin out every week. Like, uh, so I don't know. I don't like doing that. Uh, and then having to roll it back. And it's like three bins. It's like the, the red bin for the, 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 bit, the, the general stuff. And then there's like the yellow bin for the recycle stuff. Then there's like the green bin. With all the like, that's what I like. I just don't like it. Uh, whereas right now, there's like one shoot. It's like directly outside my door. And I was like, open it and it's like, wee, it's gone. <laughs> it's so clean. <laughs> so, uh, so it depends on like your lifestyle, right? Um, all right, let's go to Joel. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I'm off, yeah. I am off mute. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to remember what, what I was going to say, but I, I will agree with, so regarding going back to the lift thing, is definitely given a choice, I will always 
take the stairs. I always used to do this. Used to work on. You always take years the stairs. Ago. But what about if you go take... to like visit, like say our our if you came to Sydney and you came to like the fancy casino and let's say that's on 120 floors. You're telling me you would go find the fire exit to go up the stairs instead of going up, or you would just like, no, nah, I'm just not going to go there. I probably would. Knowing me, I would probably take 120 floors just for the challenge of it. Yeah. On the fire staircase <laughs> that nobody really knows. Like, you sure you would go hunt it down? Would I go and hunt it down? I would assume that there would be a staircase because they have well, to have a staircase. Well, there has to be one, but I mean, I wouldn't yeah. even know where it is unless I purposely look for it. I probably would. I would be the person who go, really? yeah, I'll take the stairs. I'll see it. I've done this in hotels with friends that are on the we're on like the eighth floor and they'll take the lift. I say, I'll see you at the top. And then I race them to see if I can get there before them. And then I stand outside the door and go, Oh, I'll beat you. <laughs> but that's me. Um, but I did actually have to take a lift recently. And the, the reason I took a lift, I was in I was going to a storage place to put some stuff in storage and I had a big trolley. It was really, really heavy stuff. And yes, I wasn't going to carry uh, a chest of drawers up the stairs. So that was a choice. There was that was convenience. And I did get in, I had the key and I had to actually turn it on. And I was like, and the guy was like, yeah, if you get if it stops and you do this, you do that. And I'm like, oh, not sure I'm happy with that. But also I don't want to carry it up the stairs. So so, yeah. And going back to houses, I am in the case where I actually want to downsize because, yeah, the size of garden we have and the things, it, it's, it's just too much, taking up too much of my time. And I want to be doing other stuff now. I want to be, I don't want to be having to do that. But I do want a little garden, but a manageable garden. That yeah, I have a long. manageable garden now too. It's just on my balcony and it's just like about that big. <laughs> it's got yeah, stuff like having, having on dogs, the mirror. So I need it, it, but yeah. But for, I mean, I agree with Julie. She was saying a garden is her, is her place to be, and just to have a little bit of doesn't have to be big, but somewhere where it's mine, I can just sit outside, and um, I haven't got to go to a park where there's lots of other people to have to get outside. So that's just a personal thing. So I would, and if it was a flat, I'd want to be on the ground floor with a garden. So it's not I'm adverse to flats, but I wouldn't want to not have a garden at all. Hmm, interesting. Right, so wow, look at the time. It's just like nine o'clock already. One hour goes by way too fast. Um, does anyone have any last input before we like disappear? Um, yeah, last input. Yeah, Peter. I and do, then let's see you. I do. I just want to share with everyone tonight. Yeah. I've learned something really interesting share. about myself is because I've associated the word gamble to something very different. Oh, tell. Do yeah. tell. <laughs> so, well, well, I think it's what it is. Like in, in there's two meanings to it, but in my mind the meaning to gamble is like, yeah, um, you're, you're spending something hoping to get something in return and you're, it's not a guarantee. But I'm thinking it as in, gamble as in you know you like you're putting money on on a game blackjack or whatever yeah. yeah and then I and then I see but it's interesting because I see what you're saying like we are all we all gamble in our everyday lives but I associate that with risk that we're risk takers so, so I language it, it I language I... it differently does that make sense so did I but whilst you were talking about that my brain is kind of churning because I always think does that make sense? And so you, wait, you were saying, this is actually a really interesting point, I feel. You were saying, can you repeat what you said again? <laughs> so gamble, the word gamble, what it, what I interpret it to be, gamble is that yeah. you're like, you know, you're putting money on something. So you're, there's a risk of losing something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pause there, pause there. So oh. when you're putting money on, on something that there's a risk of, or you know, more, risk of losing something but it was the hope of potentially gaining something either so one way or the other right yeah. but if we really think about what is the logical reason behind that is because if we put say a hundred bucks on blackjack and we're hoping to get a thousand bucks let's just say that that hope right that's the gamble right mm -hmm. why are we doing that we are doing that because we are trying to put the minimal energy in this moment playing a game 
And in two minutes, times 10 are wealth back, right? So we're trying to exert the littlest energy to get that much, which is, which is, which is what we really are doing. Like, why do we even work? We work because we are putting our effort every day to get money. That's actually why we work, right? Nobody, as everyone would quit work <laughs> if it wasn't for the money, right? <laughs> so that's why like people just trying to win the lotto so they can quit work, right? So this whole thing is just, we're taking a less gamble or more gamble, right? Mm -hmm. We're working a job because it's low risk that someone's cheating us. Like by exerting our energy, we get we are gambling this thing where our employers pays us. Because there's a chance they don't pay us. But yeah. it's just that we've done it so many times that we know if we put this amount of effort, we get something back. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's actually just this transfer of like energy out, labor or energy out. And, and labor is just our energy. This is how much energy we put out, how much we can get back as quick as possible. That, that actually ties right back to Christina's point of like when we seeing things, whether it's valuable, it's like we should be thinking of it in terms of energy. It's like if I can put a small amount of energy like and get a lot of it back, that makes sense. Like then you should always do that thing. Like taking the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> taking the stairs is an interesting one because taking the stairs is like, you lose a lot of energy taking the stairs, uh, but for someone that's enjoying exercise, maybe they gain that back. Like mm -hmm. you actually feel good doing that exercise. So it depends on the person and how fit they are. Mm -hmm. So someone that's very like unfit, they walk a hundred flights of stairs. No, their energy level have depleted down so bad that they're like, that was the worst that was the worst investment of my life. Whereas someone like Jewel, who was, you know, probably from her younger days as well, she's been trained so much that, hey, taking the stairs is actually part of her routine. And that's like built into her physiology. So for her to take it, it actually makes her energized because this is like her, her. like this is building up her muscle. This is like getting her momentum. Like this thing, this thing gives her energy to do more things and she feels good about herself doing that. So yeah, so it depends. It's person dependent on your energy bar. <laughs> um, Leticia, I really like that you brought that up. I feel like we can talk so much about that point, um, Peter. Thanks for bringing that up. Like my brain is just firing off gone crazy right now, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we've got to wrap up book club somehow. I know. I, I, <laughs> I could talk about it more, but it's, I, yeah, it's definitely created a shift in me in language. And then meaning. Yeah. So, yeah. I really language of, and, and, and I think that's the key point, right? Like it's just language and meaning. And what does it really mean? Because we, we could go, because I had a negative connotation to that as well and it's associated with risk. And then when I heard it, I was like, mm, that shifted me a bit on how I thought about it. So that makes your thinking a little bit different now. Um, hmm, it's, a, it's a good shift. Uh, Leticia. <laughs> I just wanted to add something different yeah. and in, about the power of reading, right? Yeah. Um, in this case, how important about uh, about money, about the concept of uh, money and um, for a person who doesn't have access to reading this type of books or doesn't have the interest or a person who thinks that is just, um, uh, how to say... That this information is just for the wealthy, or this is for different people. Um, I think that's um, how to say. Well, I just want to give the background. So I come from Mexico, right? So the 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 population, the percentage of population who read books about these topics, or generally speaking, uh, any other topic, is very very small. Right, yeah. but yeah. when, not when we, there's, we, we are a rare breed here reading books, <laughs> <laughs> listening to everybody. I mean, and uh, when I'm listening to you know the uh, the comments for this book, 
uh, it ju that just came to my mind, like how important it is to be informed, how important it is to be uh, reading books, even though we know about the importance, but when you are actually in the book uh, and you are learning all this uh, important information, I just think, uh, I wish like many more people could see this, that uh, reading books, it will uh, help a lot in many ways. Um, especially in money, right? Like a lot of people make a lot of money, but the way they use the money, the way they invest the money, the way they uh, see money is just uh, the way that it was passed from their parents, right? It's just like, okay, yeah, go absolutely. make money and expend the money. And because just the rich people is the one who knows how to invest, the rich people know how to, you know, save but money. But not anymore. So I think that's that's the important, that's, that's the key point. It's like once upon a time that knowledge was passed down, you would have had to be born wealthy. You would have to be born in a family that could afford education to have that. But the, but the interesting part now is that even if we don't have access to book in certain places, you have access to the internet. And that has opened up a lot. Yes, some, granted, some countries uh, restrict certain information, but by large, we have those information. So now, personally, we no longer really have this excuse to go, oh, I wasn't born in a rich family. I didn't have access to that information. We do now. So it's all just a click. Like everyone can go on YouTube. Everyone can go, go on Google or, or other search engine, right? So now that we have it, now that we have access, this is the point when we go, it is our responsibility. What are we going to do about the information now that we have access to? And it's not, it's, it's not even a case of, okay, well, if I was born in somewhere else or if I had my mom was different or my parents taught me differently, it's like, yes, they could have. They could have, and we didn't get that. We, we you know, whether that's the the lottery we got the hand we got dealt it's like we can change hands though we can change hands yes, yes and, and true, for the first but... time in a long time in history we get to change hands mm, those generations before us many of them didn't they actually would just not have that would we yes. like they did not have this in their pocket or <laughs> like more like an arm extension that was like we're always attached to it they didn't have that so they taught us everything to give us like the upper hand already, like our parents or, or the, you know, the grandparents, they taught them everything they could to give them the upper hand. That's why so many, like the, the generation before it's like, I'll send my kids overseas. I'll do that. Like they are trying to like, that is like, to me, that's like Superman. <laughs> that's like the other country, say, like the other planet sending like the Superman baby down to, uh, to save it. It's like, they did everything they could <laughs> to give themselves like a better life. <laughs> you know? Like they did everything they could. So now that we almost need to be our own parent, our parent didn't know. <laughs> so we have to parent ourselves and go, damn it, we didn't get what we wanted, but heck, <laughs> I will be my own parent for my own personal responsibility. What can I do today? to change my future because we still have a long future to go. <laughs> like we still have many like days ahead of us, months ahead, years ahead, decades ahead, maybe like who knows how long we will live till uh, with the medical advance. Um, we could be living to a long time. Uh, our knowledge can be preserved. Like God knows what would happen. Um, and when you say the, you wish that a lot more people have access to this. Don't wish. Put it out there. Be the leader. Be the person that shares this information. When we have access to it, I almost see it as a duty now. It's like we have the privilege to be reading this. We have to be the privilege of being in a room sharing information with each other. Like that's valuable information we can pass on it's a lot out there already but who is to say that you aren't the person that inspired someone else i just i want to add the comment so i am i'm listening to the book for tony Robbins, and yeah. he was mentioning about the car right he was mentioning how his son bought a ferrari or something, no a bmw a super expensive you know and um, how after he realized that it was just kind of a loss a loss 
a lot of lost money uh, a lot of lost money a lot of lost money yeah <laughs> yeah um but it's just a shift in the mentality right because we're talking about that even the system is is just for people to borrow money to actually buy things um but now that people is shifting their shifting their mind of uh, okay maybe if i buy a uh, a smaller car, a cheaper car, uh, with the money up front, you know, is less expensive. I will be saving money in all the interest, which is uh, yes. what is, yeah. It's just even for for uh, wealthier people. But yeah, the concepts are changing. I mean, for me, listening to this, that, that thing has an impact both for you know people that are average and people that are rich they just they could have that same mentality it's like when you're rich it's just like you're buying a more expensive car and you know still doing those things when you're like average you're, you're still buying the car that you can't afford you know it's like instead of buying yeah. like the tiny little i don't know nissan tilda or whatever it's like you you went and bought the toyota corolla when you you really could have just driven this thing and then when it's like the toyota corolla it's like well, maybe you should have been driving that, but you bought the Mercedes Benz. <laughs> and then when you're like at the Mercedes Benz, it's like you could be driving the Mercedes Benz, but you wanted the Tesla. And then when you're like at the Tesla, you're like, I want the Lambo. <laughs> so it's like yeah, the mentality, a lot of it, if it's like, it's almost, it doesn't matter like how rich you are. It's like you, you that still stays as the person. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's really cool. All right, we're over time, so we'll wrap it up here. Uh, thank you for being here and for all your shares. And oh, we didn't take a screenshot. Should we take a screenshot? Ah, where's everybody? I can't see the others. So you guys are gonna turn it on, or should we do it? Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Okay. I will put it up in the club, and I'll see you guys.